Hello, this is part four of the video series about BWC on the AWS Marketplace. And so if you remember from our previous video, essentially we set up our S3 buckets where we have our zip file for our studio and for the different plugins available up there. So anytime, let's say, a new developer needs to be onboarded or new uh, workspaces need to be created, it's easy to just pull that those zip files from there and install that. And so in this video, I'm actually going to do that today. So I have this Ubuntu image. Uh, let me log into it. And it's relatively clean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to download the zip files um, for Studio and the different plugins I need and actually install them onto my image. And then in, um, in a future video, I'll use that the Studio I installed to actually um, build a project that will deploy on our ECS cluster. So what I have, if I go open up my Firefox window, I'm already up my, I'm already logged into my Amazon account. So if I go back to S3, that will show my buckets. And then if I go to BWC Studio Installation, BWCE, and uh, it's a Linux machine. So I'm going to be installing, or I'm going to want to download the, uh, the Linux file. So just hit download, save file. And so the size of this is nearly a gigabyte, so it might take a while. Um, while that's downloading, I'm also going to go back into plugins, and I'm going to download, download the Salesforce plugin. Um, so if you recall from the previous video, our um, Docker image now has the ability to use Salesforce, um, Kafka, and S3 as plugins. So when I actually build a sample application, which I'll build later, I'm going to actually use Salesforce and build that out. So I'm going to download the Linux version of this as well. And so we just got to wait for these to download. Um, once they finish download, we're going to, we'll, we'll install these, or we'll unzip them and install um, the studio and install the plugin as well. So it took around 20, 25, 30 minutes to actually download the zip file and um, the plugin zip that I chose to download. Um, of course, this is just this depends on your internet speed and such. So if I go here and change, if I just click on the containing folder, um, I can see here that my two zip files for um, what I downloaded are there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to create one just called uh, BWCE um, install, and then a new one called um, BWCE Salesforce plugin. So I'm going to unzip these within this um, folder. So if I click on here, I'm just going to extract this into BWC install. And so it's going to play, um, it's going to unzip that uh, zip file into that folder. And I'm going to do the same thing for the BW Salesforce plugin. Just close out of that. And put that into the BWC SF plugin folder that I created. So now if we go into the BWC SF folders plugin, you'll see the different files to install that, but first we need to actually install the studio. So if you go to BWC install, um, all the different files to actually install your studio are here. So if I go and open up, let me open up a new terminal. Let me go to my downloads folder and the new folder that I created, install. Um, I, I'm gonna run the bin file, so it's just and this will start the, um, the bin. Um, you're going to get an installation wizard that will pop up that will let you choose what your typical home is. Um, certain files will also be needed, so either you can download them that are also on the S3 um, storage, or you can just download them from online, just depending on what you need to do. So if I hit Next, I'm just going to quickly run through this. Um, you need to create a typical home, so if you have one already, you can select one or you can create a new one. I'm just going to create a new one just to make sure that it's all installed correctly. So I'm just going to choose the desktop. I'm going to say BWC231. Next. Then I have to download a certain binary. It'll download that binary. Except I need to download an Oracle Ecliptic Curve uh, library. You know, download and install that as well. So the actually installation itself, once you select all the home and all these downloading stuff, will take a few minutes. So I'll quickly run through that. So 
So now we see the post installation summary saying it's complete, so hit finish. Now we'll have the ability to actually go in and um, use our studio. So if I, let me just go back to my desktop directory. You'll see that I have a new folder for Studio itself. So actually, if I want to actually run Studio, if I want to open it up, then I'll go to Studio, 4.0, Clips. Then this um, typical business studio, if you just launch that, that will bring up Studio, so we'll launch that right now. And so the first time that you start it up, you'll be asked, or every time they start it up, you'll ask for a workspace, but the first time for sure. Um, every other time, if you, if you decide you don't want to see that message anymore, then you can say, um, don't show me. Um, so starting up. So you just choose a workspace. So I'm going to just create a new one, Workspace AWS. And it'll start up the studio for me. And then usually the first time we start it up, it takes a little bit longer. But then once you start it up the first time, um, it's a lot faster. So while waiting for that to start up, I'm going to open up a new terminal. And we also now need to install the Salesforce plugin. So if I go in back into my uh, downloads directory, and I go into BWCE SF plugin folder, you'll see that there is, once again, a bin that I can run that will install this into my uh, studio. So I'll run that. And this, once again, will bring up the installation wizard window. So I'll ask you a couple of some information. Um, you'll have to, so the studio just came up, just hit OK. So now, so now the studio is available to use. Um, but we'll get back to that. Um, while I'm installing the license agreement, I accept. Um, choose the typical home. So you're going to want to choose this in the, the same home that you installed your studio. So in this case, it was the desktop for me. And then I'll run through the installation wizard. We'll install that onto your studio so you'll have the ability to actually use um, the Salesforce plugin within studio to build projects. We'll give, give this a little time, a few minutes. So while that's running, we need to hit next. So while that's running, it's going to keep trying to pop up. If we notice in studio, I'm just going to create a new project just to show you. Uh, AWS tests. So we're actually going to create a real project in one of the future videos that we'll be using and deploying onto ECS. But just for the sake of showing out Studio itself, I just create a test project. Um, you'll notice here that the Project Explorer will pop up, which will actually create the project. And then in the PAL library, will be on the other side. So it looks like the installation for the plugin is done. So I hit Finish. And then if I go here in my palette library, I may have to reinstall this in order to see Salesforce. Yeah, it will. But if you notice, these are the different palettes I have. So now, if I wanted to use this to design a project, it's just a matter of clicking it and dragging and dropping that in. Um, let me restart this just to show you that the Salesforce plugin has successfully installed. So I can Studio. And I'm just going to restart this. If you notice now on my palette library, let me expand this a little better. I actually have the Salesforce plugin, and I have a Salesforce bulk API plugin as well. So now I know that my plugin is installed correctly. It's also available to be used in my Docker image. So now when I build a project and I decide to use Salesforce, I have everything available there. So in the next video, we'll actually be doing that. We'll be building out a simple business works container edition project using Salesforce, the Salesforce plugin. And we'll build that out, and then later on, we'll actually deploy that onto our ECS cluster that we currently have running on AWS. Mm -hmm.